Hey guys, it's Aaron. We are on the third week of creating this architectural model. I'm three weeks, three weeks in and I'm still wearing the same shirt I was when we started. Um, the first week we had, we went and created, uh, pulled in a, a reference image, scaled it up, got that all set, ready to draw. We reviewed it. Um, second time, second week we went in and we drew in our exterior walls. Third week, we're gonna go draw our interior walls. So. Let's just hop right in and we'll get that started. So I'm gonna just come in here and zoom on in. Uh, what we're looking for now is these interior walls. I'm not gonna worry about piecing out each interior wall, making it a separate piece, anything like that. Uh, we talked about that with the exterior walls. You guys know it's an option. You could do that if you wanted to. In this case, I'm just going to uh, put these all in as one connected piece and uh, group it and put it on its own layer. So I'll go ahead and start with this big wall right down the middle. See right here? Um, it looks like it lines up with this corner. If I go ahead and snap x-ray on and off, I can actually look at where that other wall lines up in reference to the image. Yeah, I feel pretty confident saying that uh, I should have a wall coming right out this corner flush with this exterior wall. So what I'm gonna do is this is grouped. Remember, this all my exterior walls are grouped, so I can't mess with that geometry. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a rectangle, and I'm gonna start at this bottom corner right here. I'm gonna drag up. I could come in here now and type the dimensions. I want this to be nine foot by five and a half inches, or I can hover over this back corner right here, pull it forward to the front, and look at my dimension there. Nine foot by five and a half, perfect. I'll click right there. That gives me my first rectangle. Then I go ahead and drag that all the way out to this opposite corner. All right, I got a couple more things like that going on. Um, let's look at, let's look at doing some some pieces over here um, right here i have a room that is 14 foot 5 so i'm going to click right here on the bottom i'm going to start drawing this direction and then type in 14 foot 5. that's going to give me a snap point right there i'll go ahead and pull that up so i'm going to snap on the blue axes then i'll select that line scoot it over what's the What's the wall width? This looks like an interior wall. Says, I'm going to say this is three and a half, so I'm going to type 3.5. And then I can use, again, push-pull to just drag that to the other side. All right, as I keep working my way along here, here I have a three and a half interior wall that lines up with my exterior. So I'll do the same thing I did before with my rectangle. I'll click here. I'll drag it up like this. In this case, I don't have that snap point to pull across because it's the wrong size but I can type in 3.5 comma nine feet, and that'll give me that rectangle. I can push pull, boom, right across there. Now, you notice a little difference between this piece and this piece right here. This one, because it started on this long geometry and I pulled it out, it all kind of welded together. In the second one, because I started the group and pulled it in, I have this line separating the two faces, top and bottom. All I have to do in that case is hit erase, Click right there to erase it. Simple, easy stuff. Um, this is pretty much the process that I go through. There's a couple things that I may try to do to save time, that sort of thing. Um, I may, if I, uh, here, let's, let me do something. I'm gonna undo that because I wanna take that wall, I'm gonna select it all, and I'm gonna go to move. So I have two foot, one inch, from the inside of this wall to the inside of this wall. So what I could do is I could grab the selected wall, select it, option to make a copy, that's control on windows, and I could start to pull it across here. So I'm going on the red axes right now. Now if I move this over two foot one inch, it gets me close but not quite because that is relative. So that's, that's from this point to this point is two foot one. It should actually be three and a half inches further over. So Again, I haven't changed anything, so what I could actually type right now is I could just hop in and put a new dimension in, because I actually want that to be two foot, and then one plus the three and a half inches is 4.5. That puts that where I want that to be. Perfect. Obviously, that's a little long. That's gonna be an issue, but I could come in and actually make that change too. I could actually come here, let's see, we'll go escape out, and I could push pull this back to what it's supposed to be. Now, this is actually kind of an 
interesting way of doing things. What I could do right here is I could actually delete this, get rid of all of these, because I know that this is supposed to be six foot three from the face and just pull that out six foot three. That's an option too. That gets me in the right spot. Here I have a, uh, a wall that's supposed to be right here. So what I could do, a lot of options here. I could draw a line straight across here, draw a line from there straight down, basically create that rectangle. Oops, went a little short right there. And I could pull that out now. Here, let me actually back up one step and get rid of this surface and that surface. And I could pull that out 3.5 inches. And now I can push pull that wall wherever I need that to go. This is the nice thing about modeling walls in SketchUp. I've done this in lots of different uh, software packages. And the thing I always like about modeling in SketchUp, I know I'm biased, but is the fact that you can just kind of model whatever piece you want. You can throw a line on the ground and delete it later, pull a surface out, push it back later. It's real simple, real fluid. One of the things I do want to be careful of, of course, is my faces. So here I have some interior and exterior or some front and back faces. Um, because this is all connected in a big mass, one of the things I can do is right click on a white line, white surface and say orient faces. That should flip those other surfaces back to the same direction. So at this point, it's really just a matter of working through using these dimensions to draw on the lines. Again, I'm not going to come in here and uh, try to just arbitrarily snap to a point. I do want some precision. So it's a matter of using these dimensions, drawing lines, pulling surfaces. And a couple more minutes and these interior walls should be done. There we go. Last step, of course, let me take all that, make it a group, and then apply it to my interior walls layer. So again, one way to go about that process. Hopefully that's something that can help you in your process of inputting interior walls. Like I said, it's not the only way to do it. It's a, a, a method of creating those interior walls. And hopefully there's a skill or two in there that maybe you haven't seen of before or haven't th thought of. If you have a different way of doing it, let us know down in the comments below. While you're there, go ahead and subscribe or like, or maybe tell us more about what you'd like to see. We like making these videos, but like them a lot more when they're showing stuff that helps you with your workflow. Thank you.